Hey there, my name is Tyler Harrington. Welcome to the Caitlin James YouTube channel. I am the filmmaker and videographer behind this YouTube channel, but I'm also a former photographer. I shot weddings professionally for a number of years back in the day, back when I was a KJ fangirl. I am gonna be stepping in and doing a bit of a guest post. I went on KJ Education and I asked you guys what you wanted me to make an episode about. And surprisingly or not, a lot of you said you wanted me to talk about video stuff for photographers. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if you know anything about me, you'll know that brevity is not necessarily my strong suit. So I'm going to do my best to answer these as uh, quickly as possible. But video is rather complicated and there isn't necessarily a short answer to anything. So I'm going to do my best to point you in the right direction of maybe some potential resources that could help answer these questions better because uh, I could probably make entire YouTube episodes about all of these and some of them I have. So Let's just jump right into it. All right, our first question is from Victoria. She says, I would love for you to share videographer tips for the photographer wanting to try video. Essentially, how to get into video and the differences between photo and video from a te technical standpoint, etc." Well, Victoria, that is a great question. And I actually happen to have a video on my personal YouTube channel, which I'll link down below, that is called five tips for photographers who want to shoot video. So we are on the same wavelength there. But to give you sort of like the uh, SparkNotes version of that video, um, from a technical standpoint, the biggest difference I would say from video to photo is you need to realize that when you're shooting video, you're shooting a highly compressed version of media, right? When you're shooting photography, most people, hopefully out there, you're shooting in raw. So you have a lot more flexibility in post with things like dynamic range, your colors, all sorts of stuff. You can change all of that in editing. With video, it's essentially like shooting a medium sized JPEG. Um, and depending on your settings, a lot of things are baked into your footage. So what your settings are in camera when you're shooting video are going to impact things like saturation and contrast and sharpening and those types of things. So if you go watch that video, I talk through some settings I recommend changing in your camera um, prior to shooting so that way you can be adding all those things back in but you just need to know that the um, ability you're gonna have to edit your footage in post-processing for video is gonna be much more limited compared to uh, shooting photography so you need to take that into account you need to shoot with that in mind and that leads to our second question uh, which uh, from Jessica which she says uh, I would love some videographer tips how do you edit video to match or come close to KJ style images what camera settings do you use basic gear needed etc so this goes back to the first question in that in order, it depends on your style. And with Caitlin's style, she has, you know, she really likes to push um, her brights. You know, her whites are pretty bright. Um, not a ton of like really heavy blacks or anything like that. You can definitely achieve something similar in video. But the thing you gotta look out for is you're just not gonna have the dynamic range in video that you have in photo. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get the exact same style. And that's why a lot of times, um, depending on your style of photography, it is kind of hard to emulate it in video because once you start to push your video files to maybe the same level you'd push your your raw photos, um, you're gonna start to run into things like clipping your highlights, you're gonna run into like crushing your blacks, things like you just don't have as much flexibility. You can see here, this is like a nice looking image, um, but if I were to reset this, reset this, you'll see it starts off like, you know, it doesn't look super bright or poppy or vibrant or anything like that. And we're able to push it to here. But if you were to start to try and push this even further, like take the highlights and like brighten them up more, like really bright like push you want like a really bright and area style and like push your whites and you start like bringing your blacks down and stuff like that you can see that pretty quickly it starts to just fall apart whereas for a photo this would probably be fine like you could probably get away with an edit similar to this um it's just like you can already see like it's just starting to really really fall apart here so what i would suggest is looking for what's called a lut a lut stands for a look up table and basically all it is is it's basically the video equivalent of presets now i know we don't love presets around here in the kj education sphere because the kj preset process is not a preset it's a process, but there are LUTs and things like that you can basically apply to your video footage in your editor that will give you a specific look. If you're looking for some really great high quality LUTs, I suggest checking out our friends over at Gamut going to the wedding LUTs section and you can kind of check out this area here. And uh, these all look really great and I promise you can find something in here that is going to fit your style, hopefully, or at least something close that you could potentially tweak to look just like your work. But 
um, our friends over White and Reverie um, partner here, and these are some really, really high quality, amazing LUTs that will make your video footage look amazing. And then that way you can use that LUT on your footage, and it'll get you close enough. It's never gonna be exact, but it'll get you in the ballpark so that at least they look similar on something like your Instagram feed or something like that. Okay, so our next question is from Donna. I think that's how you say that. I'm so sorry. Donna, she says, I would love some tips on how to shoot some behind the scenes of me shooting so I can use it in websites and videos I make and embed in my Flowdesk emails. I think that is a great idea. One tip I would say for something like this, if there's something that you're really committed to and you really wanna get um, better behind the scenes and you don't have anybody who's there to help you, um, and this is kind of like a crazy, a crazy answer, maybe you may not think of this, would be a 360 camera. Now basically what a 360 camera does is it has like, um, a lens that points forward and a lens that points backwards and they're super wide and by having those two different lenses it basically is filming in all directions up down all around in a sphere all around you now this seems like it'd be kind of impractical because you may have seen this type of footage before on you know TikTok or instagram or whatever and you see the people can do these kind of crazy like 3d circle effects and whatever but that's not the the beauty of this is that in the software for the camera what you can actually do is you can go in to that frame so you're recording and you can get a flat image it doesn't have to be curved or distorted or anything like that a flat image but you can choose what direction you want your frame to be pointing so what's nice about this is that if you place this 360 camera strategically somewhere where you're doing a photo shoot or something like that and you are intentional about where you're placing it you can go back and forth in, in editing um, say you place it somewhere between you and your client you're photographing a family over here and you place the 360 camera somewhere between them and you you can choose in the software to have a shot that's facing towards you so that you're perfectly framed in the shot and then you can flip it around so that it's a perfectly framed shot of the person that you're filming and then if something happens over here you can have it over there if you move any as long as you're in the 360 sphere of this camera you can get a nice and it'll it doesn't look distorted again it's just a nice flat image of you filming now is this better than having someone there to be filming behind the scenes or something like that? I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe not. Um, a lot of these do have some pretty good stabilization built in and those types of things. So um, I think it's one of those things that may be worth looking into if it's something that you do a lot of and you just don't have anybody there to help you. Um, you can also do this where you can mount it on your camera so you can have a shot of what's facing you and then a shot of you. There's lots of different things you can do with this. You can get creative with it, but I think it's something that people aren't aware of that could be a really cool tool to use for something like behind the scenes. Okay, we have another question here from Deandra. She says, I would love to see tips on taking video with my DSLR and turning those into reels or short teaser videos for my clients, specifically composition. I feel like mine are so boring and typical. What provokes emotion rather than just a BTS of me photographing a client? This is a really good question. Okay, so I have a few thoughts. Um, somewhat to do with composition, but more just on making like good videos and reels and things like that. First things first, I think you need to have a plan. You come into a photo shoot and you wanna make some behind the scenes reels or something like that, but you don't have any sort of a plan, you're gonna end up with a bunch of the same shots and it is gonna be pretty like boring and typical. So what I would say is your goal for this is to figure out, okay, what do I want to illustrate? What is the story that I'm trying to tell is the behind the scenes of this? What are the elements or the parts of this shoot of this day that I'm trying to capture and then have some ideas in your mind for how you wanna capture those. So having something in your mind ahead of time is gonna be huge. So the way I always think about this is you wanna shoot in threes. So there's three different elements of shooting in threes. You wanna be shooting things um, beginning, middle, and end. And you also wanna shoot each one of those wide, medium, and tight. If you're able to shoot in this way, beginning, middle, end, wide, medium, tight, you're gonna add a ton more variety and it's gonna give your editing, will feel a lot more dynamic and interesting and you're actually telling a story as opposed to just having like a static shot from a bunch of different parts of the day. Even if you can just get two out of the three, you're starting to create some variety in these different things. If you start thinking about them in this way, now you're gonna create like a nice actual story as opposed to just having a bunch of random clips that you're trying to figure out how to put together. And then the last thing I'll say about this whole concept of like wide, medium, tight, beginning, middle, end is that um, the more that you do it and the more that you edit them together, the better you're gonna get at capturing what you need because it's not until you get into editing and you're actually editing something together, trying to make a little reel or whatever it might be, that's when you're gonna start realizing, oh man, I wish this shot was a little bit longer. I wish this shot was 
uh, tighter. I wish I had more variety, those types of things. So I would say just like, you gotta just start doing it and you gotta start practicing. And the more that you practice, the better that you'll get at this. But have a plan, wide, medium, tight, beginning, middle, end, and practice, practice, practice. That's how you get better at doing this. All right, and then finally, we have a question from Erin. She says, I would love more info on hybrid shooting between photo and video at a session, thanks. So this was a kind of a popular theme, this hybrid shooting, you know, photo, video at the same session. Um, so actually a lot of the things I just said about shooting like behind the scenes and reels, that'll still apply here. You know, you wanna have some sort of a plan, um, which parts you actually wanna capture for video and for photo and somewhere in your mind knowing like some sort of an indicator or some sort of a story or something ahead of time that you're trying to fill. Cause otherwise if you're just trying to shoot like random video clips of everything, it's gonna be stressful trying to, cause you'll have way too much or not enough. It's just, you'll stop forgetting about it. You need to have, you need to have a plan. That's the number one thing. You need to have some sort of a plan for what it is that you're trying to create with this video. And you're not just trying to create, like capture a bunch of random clips and then like hope they piece together at the end. You need to have a vision in your mind of what you want the final video to look like. And then that will help you to make sure that you're actually getting the shots that you need. The second thing would be having two cameras for this is going to be the easiest way to do this. Um, there are some ways that you can kind of switch back and forth. And if you set up some of your, maybe like your presets or your custom modes and things like that, you can kind of bounce back and forth between photo and video, but it's never going to be a super seamless process. There are a, a lot of different settings you're going to want to change potentially between photo and video. And when it comes to, especially when you're talking about things like autofocus and, you know, white balance and, you know, custom picture profiles and all these different things. If you really want to do this seriously, I would suggest having two cameras, one for photo, one for video. The video camera ideally would have maybe some sort of like a shotgun microphone on top, something like that. You just want to make sure that you have them like dialed in so that we can just like set down your photo camera, pick up your video camera when it's time, film the video stuff that you want to film and go on from there. I would say focusing on motion is gonna be look the best on video. Video of people just like standing and smiling and doing whatever is never super interesting. It's kind of boring and doesn't, it's not very gripping. Um, so I would say that when you want to be doing the video stuff would be in and around um, whenever you're doing some sort of motion. So either having people walking, interacting, laughing, you need to have some sort of motion working into the video portions and the parts where people are just standing and smiling and like the standard portraits it's not, not even worth it's not even worth it really to get the video out like save your video time for the motion stuff and then uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I would say you just need to practice, right? You need to be really comfortable with the video settings, with your autofocus settings, with how the video works, um, with how to grab your exposure, all those different things. You need to be able to do that really quickly because there's a good chance you'll have your photo camera dialed in to whatever your settings are. And then as soon as you pick up your video camera, right? You want it to be a pretty seamless transition, but you're still gonna have to dial in your exposure um, and those types of things if you hadn't been using it for a few minutes or if you've moved to a new location, something like that. So you need to make sure that you're really, really comfortable with how to dial these things in, how to evaluate your exposure, how to make sure that you have good exposure or what that actually looks like, all those different things. You need to do a little bit of uh, practice ahead of time just to get comfortable with what it looks like to use your camera in video mode. All right, well, there you have it. Some video tips for you photographers out there. Now, again, I could make an entire YouTube video about all of these questions and it's probably multiple videos for some of them. Um, so we're kind of just like scratching the surface here. There is a lot that goes into video, but you don't have to know everything to get started. So hopefully some of these tips were helpful for you. All the things I talk about here in this video, all the resources and links and all that kind of stuff will be down in the description below. Um, so make sure you check those out if you are interested. I have my own personal YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. There are some things on there specifically for um, people just getting started in video. So you can check that out as well. If you have any questions, concerns, anything at all, please leave those in the comments down below. I read the comments for all the videos, but I will definitely be checking on them for this video and answering any questions that you guys might have. We will be back in two weeks with our regularly scheduled programming. And in case you weren't aware, um, we have been posting um, on, we've been posting a YouTube video one week. And then the following week we post I podcast episode. So you haven't checked out Caitlin's podcast, definitely go check that out. It is uh, really, really great. We've had our first guest on recently. We've had some really great episodes on there. So if you want to know more about Caitlin, you want to get deeper into her brain and just hear more of like the genuine KK thoughts, the podcast is where you want to go. So go check that out. If you haven't already, subscribe 
leave a review, all the, you know, normal podcasting things. Thank you all so much for your questions. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.